welcome back to my channel if you are new here my name is melanie i talk about all things faith work wellness how to live your best multifaceted life with balance and simplicity so i pretty much cater to the everyday multifaceted women and men of faith and yeah helping you balance all the things today i am going to answer the most frequently asked questions that I get asked about the day-to-day -day of a project manager. I did another video that talked about like how to transition into project management, but I also get a lot of questions about like how do you manage your time? How do you manage multiple projects? Like what does the day-to-day -day of a project manager actually look like? So this video could cater to those who are looking to transition into project management. Maybe you do project management on the job or you just wanna learn from someone who has been doing this for over 12 years now. And and yeah, let's get started. I have five questions that I'm going to answer, but let me know in the comments below what other additional questions that you have so that way I can do a part two if needed. So let's get started. So the first question is, what is the day-to-day -day of a project manager? So I made notes. When I think about the day-to-day -day of a project manager, it typically has to do with these seven kind of areas, if you will. The first point rather of being a project manager is making sure that everyone is clear on the goals, the objectives and the scope at the beginning of the project. So that's going to be a lot of planning, meeting with your executive sponsor, meeting with the project team, just making sure that everyone is clear on the overall scope. And then it's up to you as a project manager to keep everyone on task and on the goals and objectives as you go throughout the project. So there are a lot of things like scope creep when people want to add things to the project while it's already in flight. They just kind of have to manage and have processes in place when people want to make changes to the goals and objectives. So it is again defining goals and objectives, keeping everyone on task to those goals and objectives. And then the second thing is planning and scheduling. So that's going to be planning and scheduling your overall pro project. So for the same example, if you're launching a product, when do we start? When does it launch? What are all the milestones in between? So that's a part of like creating the project plan. What are all of the detailed tasks that need to be done from every perspective, from marketing to development, to risk, to quality control, like all of the different resources or different aspects of that project, you wanna make sure that you have a plan for it. So typically what I do is I have my project plan where I have all of my tasks broken up by category or maybe broken up by phase of that of that specific project schedule. And then under each of those categories, I have all the detailed tasks, I have when they need to get done by, and then I usually will always assign an owner to that specific task. So that's what the project planning and scheduling will look like. That way everyone knows the tasks that they need to do and when they need to do it by. The other part of that is obviously meeting facilitation. So you're gonna be planning all of your weekly project calls or if you need to have like a working session with your project team. So you're gonna be a lot, it's gonna be a lot of meeting scheduling, meeting facilitation. And so yeah, it's important as a project manager that you're really gathering everyone around and keeping everyone organized to the work that needs to be done. So the third aspect of project management, and this is a really big one, is stakeholder management and communication. So stakeholders are gonna be all the people that are involved or have a say so or will be impacted by your project. So that's going to be anywhere from your project team, maybe to your sponsor, that same leader that told you like we need to get this launched by the end of the year. So you're going to have to report up to the leadership. You're also going to have to deal about the customers or the end user that are going to be impacted by the product launch. And so you're going to need to make sure that you have the right communication channels in place to one, communicate the status of the project, communicate any risk or escalate any risk. And so it's all about really managing everyone's expectations. So managing communication with your project team, keeping them on task, being able to help them deal with any barriers. Maybe you have to go to another team to say, hey, we're gonna have to pull y'all in to help get this product launched in time, done in time. Uh, maybe it is reaching up to leadership to say, hey, you know, we need more resources in order to launch this product by the end of the year. Can you help us? Or communicating that risk to them. So it's a lot of communication. It's a lot of people management, people influencing, because I said this on my TikTok, like, Project management is interesting because you're not the one that's directly doing the work. You are trying to influence other people who you do not directly manage. You're trying to influence them to get the product and for the product done by X amount of time. And so 
that can be interesting, especially when you're dealing with difficult personalities, but also when you're dealing with team members or stakeholders that have competing priorities. And so how can you as a project manager influence them to get your project done on time? So it's a lot of stakeholder management and communication so that everyone is aware of what's going on with the project. The fourth one, I already talked about meeting facilitation. So again, it's a lot of meetings, a lot of communicating the same thing to different groups of people. So I already talked about that. But the fifth one is resource management. So again, the resources are typically going to be the people who are assigned to your project to help with the project. So again, using the same example of launching a product, again, you're going to have your development teams, you're going to have your quality control teams, you're going to have, you know, marketing, you're going to have risk. Maybe you'll have legal, you know, involved with your project that they, you know, have to meet some certain legal requirements. The list goes on. But for all of your resources, they are going to be dedicating X amount of time to your project. So typically in some organizations, you want to be able to understand, OK, how much time are you going to need in order to get this project done or in order to get the aspect of that you're responsible for the project done? And so you're going to have to be able to manage your resources. Again, like I already said, a lot of times they, they are, have competing priorities. They have their day jobs and then they have, are assigned to your project to also help with that. So it's just being able to manage resources, helping them manage their time. If you notice that they don't have enough time to complete a certain aspect of the project, what will be that impact to your schedule? And then once again, going back to stakeholder communication, being able to communicate that risk and come up with a mitigation plan to kind of put that to get the project back on track. So that would be resource management. The sixth thing is documentation. So again, you have your project charter. That's where you're listing out all the goals and objectives. You have your project plan where you are, again, detailing out all the tasks that need to be done and when they need to be done and who they need to be done by. And then you have your weekly project calls or your weekly meetings where you are going to be responsible for taking notes. So keep a documentation of all the action items and meeting minutes. So it's a lot of documentation. And you have to think about that all the things that I'm I'm saying has to be done for one project so if you're a project manager nine times out of ten you're going to have more than one project so again you're going to be responsible for managing the charter the project plan the meeting minutes for multiple projects and i'll get into like how you can kind of manage your time so that you can keep on track with multiple projects we'll get into that soon but yeah the sixth thing is documentation and the last thing i already kind of alluded to but the seventh thing would be risk management so again being able as a project manager to foresee risk because you are managing your resources time, you are managing the schedule, you are managing maybe the budget so you can foresee, okay, well, we need to get the marketing done by X date, but based off of my marketing team's capacity, they're not going to be able to finish it until a month after that deadline. So that's a risk. So in other words, you're going to have to go to your marketing team. You're going to have to pull in your leadership and say, hey, if we can't get marketing done until a month later, you know, what is the mitigation plan? Can we pull ad additional marketing resources to help us meet this deadline? Or do we factor in that it'll be done later and, you know, delay the launch potentially? That's just an example. But again, you want to be able to foresee any risk and where there is a risk, you need to be able to have a mitigation plan in order to either eliminate that risk, maybe control that risk, monitor the risk, or again, learning how to manage that risk so that your product launch or your project in general stays on track. So that is pretty much the day-to-day -day of a project manager is managing all those components again for multiple projects. So number two is how do you manage multiple projects? So again, as a project manager, you're typically going to have more than one project that you are managing. Unless you have like a really large project, then maybe that will be the only one. So you're going to have to differentiate your meeting time from your work time. Because again, as a project manager, you're going to have multiple meetings. Sometimes you can have a day full of meetings. So how I manage meeting time versus actual work time is I plan out my week that Mondays and Fridays, I generally do not like to schedule any project calls. That way, when I come in on Monday, I'm able to take a look at all of my projects and say, okay, what are the critical things that need to get done this week? What are the critical risks that I need to figure out a mitigation plan for or help escalate or communicate? What are some tasks that my project team needs help needs my help with? And so when I come in on Monday, I kind of go through and set the game plan for the week for each of my projects. So I don't want to have a lot of calls on Monday because that's where I'm going to be kind of creating, you know, the, the plan for the week, foreseeing any risk that I need to talk through, again, helping communicate any action items or communicate any risk. So yeah, Mondays, I typically try not to have any meetings. Tuesdays, 
and Thursdays are my heavy meeting day. So that's usually where I'm going from eight to five in meetings. And that's okay because again, on my um, on my team and my organization, we have Copilot. So I'm able to use Copilot AI. If you want a separate video on that, let me know. But I'm able to use that to kind of help me with my meeting minutes. So that way it's easier for me to capture all the meeting minutes and action items without me having to physically type everything out and it helps me be able to get through more meetings faster so again mondays are usually my admin days tuesdays and thursdays are usually my meeting days and then wednesdays usually where i have like my midweek checkpoint with my with my projects to say okay what needs to get done by the end of the week again checking in to see the the, the status of your projects and then on Fridays, usually when I do all of my status reports, so I let everyone know like this is where we are with our projects. Usually we'll do it in an email or a slide, just depends. But yeah, I'll communicate where we are, what's needed, you know, what's remaining. And then again, Friday, I'm able to kind of wrap up my day. So that's how I manage multiple projects. Again, by kind of splitting up the meeting time from the admin time but also keeping really good documentation because you're not going to remember everything that happens on calls so find a way if you aren't allowed to use copilot ai maybe you can record calls but i would find some type of way that you can record and have a transcript for your calls so that way it's easy for you to be able to understand you know where you are with each project so i hope that that was helpful that's how i manage multiple projects throughout the week the Third question is, how do I know if I would be a good PM? So again, I mentioned this in the first question, but one, you have to be okay with not being the one to do the work. And some people don't like that. Some people want to have ownership. Sometimes I'm like this too as a PM. Like I want to be able to own my task or own my action items. And as a project manager, you're really at the mercy, once again, of other resources who are who you're not their manager and you're having to influence them to get things done at a specific time and so you're responsible for something that you're really not responsible for that you can't really control and so if you don't like that project management is not going to be for you if you want to be able to own something you may want to move to something more like product management or product ownership or operations management so that's one thing two again as a project manager you're not always going to be the subject matter expert so like for me right now i'm doing healthcare it projects i also do merger and acquisition projects as well and then i do freelance i do a whole nother like all the projects that i manage but anyway the point is that i'm managing so many different types of projects it's impossible for me to be the subject matter expert in everything and again some people don't like that you want to be able to have your baby that you know everything about and again that you're responsible for so if you are okay with some like ambiguity and not always having the answers or kind of sometimes honestly feeling lost because you don't know the ins and outs of the project that you're managing and that kind of makes you feel uneasy you probably wouldn't like project management but if you're okay with like knowing enough to keep things going while not being the subject matter expert then you probably you may like project management the third aspect of if you would be good at a project as a project manager is if you are, again are okay with influencing others to do the work but you're not directly responsible for the work so i already talked about that and then i would just say overall you would be a good PM if you're really good at administration, organization, and facilitation. And again, people, you're good with people relationships because again, it's going to be a lot of servant leadership where you're going to be the one taking the notes. Everyone's going to be pulling on you to help them with the task. It's important for you to keep everybody organized and again, to be able to facilitate the meetings well so that everyone can, you know, be able to communicate where they are with certain action items so that you can create, build that, you know, team cohesiveness and collaboration. So yeah, it's a lot of people relationships. It's a lot of facilitating communication organizations. So if you like those types of things, then maybe give project management a try. So yeah, those are some things you wanna consider going into project management. The fourth question is, what is the best way to get into project management? How do I get into project management? So I'm only gonna to touch on this because I did a whole other video. I'll link it below of how to transition into project management. But what I will highlight here is that, you know, you have a lot of people that want to get into project management, but they've never led projects. Nine times out of 10, you have led a project. Maybe you just did not consider it project management. But if your boss gave you an initiative, a task, a again, a product, if they gave you something and said, we need this launched 
or done by XYZ and there was a start date or an end date, you can make that into a project. So it's really kind of reframing how you look at your experience. Um, and that's going to be important when you go on the resume and when you go on an interview to be able to communicate your work in the language of project management. And again, I have two separate videos that I will link on that. But if you're getting into project management and you're like, what industry do I start in? I always tell people you want to start in the industry where you have the most experience. For example, for me, I got into healthcare project management because I was all already doing like healthcare administrative work. I was working for a doctor's office. So I was like the front office coordinator. I did back office coordination. So I was already had healthcare experience. So it was easy for me to transition into healthcare project management because where, where I may have been lacking in project management experience, I could somewhat make up for it in my industry experience. So again, if you are, if you have a background in marketing, you may want to look at marketing project management jobs. And again, it doesn't have to be with a marketing agency. Every business or organization has a, has some form of marketing. So you could even look at hospitals or healthcare systems in your area that have a marketing department to see if there's a marketing PM role there. Maybe you're not wanting to work directly in your industry, but there's still a way that you can leverage that industry experience to get into the industry that you want. Another example of that would be, let's say maybe you're a teacher, but you want to work in tech as a project manager. Well, a tech company doesn't just do software. They also have HR that has learning and development. So maybe you can move in as an HR project manager for that tech company and then, you know, stay within that role where you have that industry experience. And then maybe in a year or two, see if you can transition to a IT project manager after you've done, you know, coursework or gotten experience or whatever that may look like. But again, that's a really good way that you can leverage your industry experience to to do that same industry project management work for a different industry. And then as time progresses and you get better at project management, moving into the project management role that you want within that industry. I hope that makes sense. So you want to focus on industry experience, but then you also want to seek opportunities for to manage projects. Again, everyone is a project manager in their own right, because all of us are leading some type of initiative, some type of strategy, some type of launch, something. So what I personally did was I told my manager at the time, I said, hey, I'm trying to get into project management. What initiatives are we currently looking at within a department that I can help manage? So that's one way that you can do it. Having a conversation with your boss, asking to take on different gigs, either within that same department or a different department so that you can get more project management experience under your belt. You can also volunteer at you know local nonprofits to be able to help them manage you know different projects or events or things that they may have going on. You can do it on the side. Let's say like what I used to do, I had people that were trying to start businesses, so I would help them launch their business, which is a project you know from start to finish. And that's way that that's another way that I was able to get project management hours. So again, you want to get creative because and there are opportunities to get creative because again, everything is really a project. You know, if it has a start and end date. So it's just seeing opportunities within your current wheelhouse where you can get more experience. So those are the areas that I would focus on. You're, again, finding a job within the industry that you already have and then finding creative opportunities for you to get more specific project management experience. The last question is, OK, Mel, I'm a project manager, but I'm not seeing the six figures like you see in the six figures. And I get asked all the time, like, how do I cross over into six figures as a project manager? Now, obviously, it depends on the industry. Some project management roles, like, for example, marketing, a marketing project manager is more than likely not going to get paid the same as an IT project manager. Again, you have to think about the industry that you want to be in. Do your research to see what the salary ranges are, obviously, and, you know, move accordingly. But really, I always tell people what helped me move into six figures was getting my PMP, and that's your project management professional certification from PMI. I always recommend getting your PMP, and I think that if you have your PMP, you should be arguing. Again, it depends on the, the, the geographical area, obviously. I'm talking about specifically in the United States. I think that you should be asking for six figures within whatever role because it is one of the highest certifications that you can get as a project manager is kind of like the stamp of approval that you are a project manager you're certified you know what you're talking about and you have a certain level of expertise because you already have to have i think three years of experience in project management to even sit for that exam 
So I always tell people go for the PMP. It will make you way more marketable and then, you know, make sure that you're negotiating accordingly based off of the salary ranges for that role. So I always tell people to get their PMP to get into six figures. Another way, obviously, which alluded to my last question is, again, if you're able to leverage your industry experience, then you can ask for a higher salary because you have X amount of years within that industry. Or again, gaining more outside PM experience will also help you to be able to negotiate more because you'll have more to put on your resume and you'll have more years of experience that you can negotiate with your compensation team for a higher salary. I think it's also important when you are looking for project management roles that you are doing a gap analysis. So what I would do before I started making six figures is I would look at roles that were six figure roles and I would do a gap analysis. What are they asking for in that job description or the requirements for that role and how does that match up to where I currently am? So maybe that was I do need a couple more years of experience. Maybe I do need to get my project management certification. Maybe I need this specific type of project management experience. So it's always important to do a gap analysis so that way you can see like the role that you're wanting, the money that you're wanting and where you are, what are the steps that you need to take in order to qualify for those roles. So gap search analysis yourself, okay? So those are the five questions that I have. I want to plug in an exciting new thing that I'm doing to help those that want to get into project management and that is I am doing 20 minute mentorship calls every Wednesday of the week where again I hop on the call, I help you look through your resume, tweak your resume, maybe you're getting ready for a project management interview or you're about to start the job search process and you just need to talk to somebody for 20 minutes, you know, risk free about uh, creating a plan for yourself and so it's just a way that I have been kind of giving back. I've already started them but I haven't publicly announced them until now so I will link below if you want to hop on a quick 20 minute mentorship call with me we can pass through your questions I also have paid services as well that I will link below if you're interested but yeah let's talk on a mentorship call below and I, again I hope that this video was helpful let, let me know in the comments below what additional questions you have again I'm happy to do a part two I hope to do a part two so let me know what additional questions you have in the comments and I will see y'all on the next video. Bye, y'all.